Okay, in our last video, we got halfway done a production report and I just wanna pick up right where I left off. If you're interested in learning how to compute equivalent units or do the top half of a production report, for which I've got the template down below, uh, tune into the previous video on process costing. Uh, what we're doing is we're about halfway through this former exam question. Uh, we're six marks, supposed to take 10 minutes. I've taken much more than that, uh, but I've been explaining it. In a test, you wouldn't have to explain it and kind of walk through it so slowly. Um, so I've worked about halfway through this problem, and we're down to our little cost reconciliation we're going to do at the bottom. So uh, costs to account for. When, when I, I did the top half, I kind of highlighted the top half and said, do not put dollar signs anywhere. If you put dollar signs here, it's an automatic sign you've screwed up. Well, now we're in the bottom half and it's all costs. So it's all money we're looking for. So our costs in beginning work in process. Let's see, costs in beginning inventory, materials cost 11,000. All right, so I'm in the materials column and beginning work in process is eleven thousand uh, dollars some weird excel formatting uh, maybe i should put in a dollar sign i'm worried that it's not going to fit but let's let's put in dollar signs here anyhow dollar sign Ugh, it's going to be tight okay anyway uh there's my eleven thousand dollars labor was 19 overhead was 16 and i don't have a labor column and i don't have an overhead column but you'll recall conversion is labor plus overhead. So conversion here is going to be 19 for labor and 16 for overhead, it's 35. Let's look at the costs incurred. Going back to the question, costs incurred, costs added to production during the month, that's cost incurred, 85, 160, and 120. So 85 for materials, 160 and 120 is 280 if you add those together. I knew it was not going to be wide enough. Let's widen these things up. There we are. Uh, and so we got 280. Total costs? Well, let's total it up. That plus that. Oop. 96. And my total cost there, uh, 35 and 280 is going to be 315. And uh, we actually total all the way around. You'll notice we didn't use our total column at all up until now. Now we do. Doesn't make sense to use the total column in the top half. We're doing equivalent units. If I add those numbers together, it doesn't really provide you anything. So let me just total these up. I'll get Excel to do the legwork here, fill it down. And those are our totals. Uh, 96, 315, and 411. Now, the key row on this whole chart. This is the first row I'd look at if I were working for this company, if I were managing the company. I wanna know how much my stuff costs per unit. So, how do I figure that out? Well, let's do a bit of math here. Total cost to account for 96,000. And the question is cost per equivalent unit. That word per means basically divided by. So I'm gonna take my cost divided by my number of equivalent units. 96,000 is my cost. 24,000 is the number of equivalent units. So in terms of material, my cost per equivalent unit is 96,000 divided by 24,000. 96,000 divided by 24,000 is four. And I made the numbers work out really nice and even. Obviously in real life, numbers won't be so nice and even. Let's do this one, cost 315 per divided by equivalent unit Total equivalent units, 22,500, 14. Again, even numbers, because I'm a nice guy. Um, all right, so cost per equivalent unit, and now I'm in a total column, 411 divided by, well, there's nothing there. So what I actually do to get the total is just add, I go 14 plus four. Four plus 14, oops, 14 is 18. So why is this number so key? Why does it matter so much? Well, it tells me how much my stuff costs, right? How much did this department add to the cost of the product? And this department added $18 to the cost of my product. So if this is the first department, then I'd add up the second department, the third department, and you'd know how much your products cost per unit. That would tell you how much money you're making on them when you sell them to wholesalers or retailers or to whomever. Uh, but 
this tells us how much our product cost. And as we said, the first half of this class, the first half of an introduction to management accounting, is just determining how much stuff costs. So this is how one of the companies that makes a one-size-fits-all product, they don't have to track each individual product like we would in job order costing. What they do here is they just track the flow of costs as it moves through uh, departments. So we don't track each individual unit. We say, okay, well, how much cost did we add to those 20, 25,000 units? Uh, and we determine a number. I made the numbers work out nice and easily. In your class, they might not, and in real life, they often, well, they rarely will work out to such an even number. Okay, so this is like the key number on the whole chart, and in fact, I'm always tempted to stop here, but we have to do a little reconciliation at the bottom, and it gives us a little bit more information. Uh, so let's do this reconciliation at the bottom. Cost of units completed and transferred out. Okay, so we take the cost per unit for times the number of units that are completed and transferred out, 20. Next, we take the cost per equivalent unit, 14, times the number of units completed and transferred out, 20. Uh, 80 plus 280, well, I can just write that in as 360. Oh, these should all have dollar signs on them. Let me just reformat this. There we are. And we're done that. Now our cost and ending whip. I'm going to take my cost per equivalent unit times by my equivalent units of ending work in process, 4,000. My cost per equivalent unit, 14 in this case, times by my ending work in process equivalent units. Again, I'm just going to add them up. Uh, let me fill this formula down. I'm going to add up uh, across the page. I'm going to add up down the page. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I thought there was a formula in there. Shoot. Well, 16 plus 35, that's 40, uh, 51. 80 plus 16, that's 96. 280 plus 35, that's 315. And 360 plus 51 is 411. Now, something you're going to notice is if you've done this right, these two rows are going to match. And they should. They match for a good reason. Total costs accounted for, 411, is going to match the row total costs to account for, 411. Now, where this, this line comes in handy is actually if you have to do journal entries related to this system, these figures are going to be important. If just preparing the report, probably the most important number is that you know how much your stuff cost. Uh, but you may be asked to prepare some journal entries related to this costing system, and these numbers, especially the totals, uh, are very relevant to those journal entries. All right, we've prepared a uh, production report. Uh, at the top of it, you do this little reconciliation of your units. You say, this is how many units I'm accounting for. This is the units as I've accounted for them. I will almost always in my class hide one of these pieces of information, like the 5,000 we didn't know in this question. It didn't tell us. And the students had to figure out, okay, it must have been 5,000. They filled in the blank. I usually actually hide the, the 20,000 completed and transferred out. Uh, in any event, then we compute our equivalent units. We say, okay, if they're complete and transferred out, they're 100% complete. So 20,000 times 100% in terms of material and conversion. The ending whip was 80% complete as to materials, 50% complete as to conversion. So I take 5,000 times 80, 5,000 times 50%. Those amounts were given. And I figure out my total equivalent units. Then I just add up all of my costs, remembering that conversion is labor plus overhead. Add up all the costs, I get total costs. I divide by my number of equivalent units to get cost per equivalent unit. And that's really the key number on the whole chart. I know that my units cost, uh, the, the amount of cost added by this department was $18 per unit. Uh, and that really informs a lot of my decisions in the future if I know how much cost I'm adding. Then I do a little reconciliation at the bottom. All right, that's the production report in a nutshell. That's it for this video, this series of videos. I hope it's been helpful to you in solving process costing problems.